So it's a possible to save $2,000 by fixing your MacBook Pro heating issues on yourself. The short answer is yes, that's what I did. So the story is I have this uh, MacBook Pro 2019 16-inch edition with the i9 uh, Intel chip and the AMD 8 gigabyte with uh, graphic card inside it. And I noticed every time I open up IDE or do local trainings on it, it has uh, serious heating problems. Uh, which version is speaking is fine because uh, it's a heavy test for CPUs and I probably should, shouldn't do any uh, local training on my machine. But I noticed it has issues when I do normal web browsing or YouTube browsing. Um, I can literally fire an app on the back plate of my MacBook Pro and the battery dies within two hours, which is just disappointing. A few weeks ago, my friend got this a new Mac, uh, M1 Pro MacBook. They're saying this amazing fast and there are really any compatibility issues. Also notice that my CPU frequency has been uh, constantly filed to 1.6 gigahertz and 800 megahertz. It always happens around the time there are new products on the market, right? You notice that your uh, phone or your laptop isn't running fast. Uh, I checked the trading price for uh, this one year old MacBook Pro. It paid less than half the price I paid originally, so I won't do it. Uh, so after some research, I noticed that I'm not the only user having heating issues on the 2019 model. And according to discussions on Reddit, reapplying the thermal phase on your CPU and GPU uh, might give you a 10 to 15 percent of the performance improvement. And also there are ways like uh, adding a copper shed and also adding a thermal pass to the VRM module. And besides, I never cleaned up the fans on this uh, Mac before. So I decided to fix it myself because personally speaking, uh, everything needed for a fix is only around 60 bucks on Amazon. And uh, compared to the 2,000 bucks I'm paying for Apple to upgrade, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, I have opened up a few iPhones or Apple Watch before, but I have never done a uh, MacBook before. So this is all the stuff I got from Amazon, uh, thermal pads, compressed air, screwdriver sets, uh, liquid metal, thermal paste, and silicone conformal coatings. So the first step will be uh, taking off the back plate. And actually, to be honest, I regretted the first 20 minutes starting that because I was worried that I might have broken my uh, back plate. And it was super hard without a suction cup, as you can see. But I finally got it. Opening up the back plate, I can see why the uh, laptop is heating up a lot. It's filled with the stand, the fur from my roommate's cat, Antonov. But actually, his Chinese name is not Antonov, but because he is large and cute, so I came up with this nickname uh, because of the Antonov, the largest airlift cargo airplane. So the first step is do some uh, basic cleaning with the compressed air on the logic board and the air vent, also on the two fans. Once everything looks good, we first need to disassemble the batteries. So there's a screw underneath the uh, ribbon cable and we have to disconnect the battery first. So if the lighting condition is not good, you can get one of those uh, headlight, uh, the one you use for outdoor campings, uh, it will work perfectly fine. And uh, make sure to Press the power buttons for 10-15 seconds to drain the batteries. Once you make sure the batteries are uh, not connected and the um, powers are drained, you can work on disconnecting the ribbon cables on the logic board. I think there are roughly around 17 to 25 of those ribbon cables. And once you disconnect them from the connector, you can work on the screws. Once you get all the ribbon cables of the connector and all the screws out of the logic board, you can then try to lift the logic board up. Make sure there's no ribbon cable or ATNA cable uh, in your way. And the next step is to unscrew the heatsink from the logic board. And this is the disassemble portion for the CPU and GPU. And as you can see, the thermal paste are not ideal on those two. I'll try to clean up the uh, original thermal paste with the Q-tip and also the alpha bar. And this is the most tedious and time consuming step in the whole process. After roughly around an hour of cleaning, there is still some of the thermal paste left over on the AMD GPU dies, and I can't get them off. 
so I decided to just move on. Because I will use the silicon coating to cover the AMD GPU die anyway, so it doesn't hurt to have some of the thermal paste leftovers. Uh, the reason I use the silicon coating to cover the die is because liquid metal is conductive, and uh, if you don't cover those dies, you will short out your GPU. Here comes the most important part, applying the liquid metal to top off your CPU and GPU. I only applied a tiny bit on each of those, but it turned out to be more than enough, and I have to uh, clean them up using the Q-tips. Over here, I applied another suggestion from online discussions, uh, adding the thermal pads to the VRM modules. The logic here is to prevent the VRM module from overheating and allow it to provide enough power. So here's a performance comparison using the Final Cut Pro to export the same 4K project. And we got about 16% of the performance improvement and also the fan is a lot quieter and also uh, the CPU temperature uh, went down around 16 degrees Celsius uh, when idle. So guys, this is it. Uh, I fixed it. There's no more heat throttling issues and uh, the total fix cost me about 60 bucks. And um, uh, do this at your own risk. Uh, liquid metal is pretty damn effective and the overall temperature went down for about 15 to 20 degrees, I would say.